The martial artist trains and practices so that when it is necessary, they will be able to defend themselves and others. The military trains and trains and trains in times of peace so that when they are called upon, they are ready to go at a moment's notice. The firefighter or paramedic trains and prepares so that when the crisis comes, they are prepared to respond. As children of God, we should be the same way. We should not be waiting for a battle in order to get ready, but rather, the Bible calls us to be ready always. So what are some ways we can stay in a state of readiness? How can we avoid that nagging statement of guilt, shame, and regret? How can we avoid saying something like, if I had more time? First, we must make sure our relationship with the Lord is good. That means we're not living in sin. We're not living in rebellion or disobedience, but rather we are living under the influence and leadership of the Holy Spirit. This is why it's so important to pray without ceasing. It's important to meditate on God's Word and keep it hidden in your heart. All of these things are to the benefit of your relationship with the Lord. Another thing that we must do to stay in a state of readiness is actually to follow the teachings of Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 21, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. This is not just a verse you should know about, but rather one where you do something about. We must actually attempt to follow Jesus' teachings in addition to believing in him. The Bible says the devil believes. The demons believe. So believing is actually not the end, but the beginning. Belief should lead to action. Belief should lead to taking up one's cross and following Jesus. Belief leads to a change in your life. If we are able to be in a state of perpetual readiness, we must commit to following the way of Jesus. And you see, our Lord knows we will fall short. He knows we will not be able to live out his commandments perfectly. He knows there will be days when we will struggle. There'll be days where we'll struggle with anxiety, worry, and maybe anger. God knows this, and that is where there's grace. When you are truly saved, when you have truly repented, you find that there is godly sorrow when you sin. There is no enjoyment, and so we must commit to following the path of righteousness and then receiving the grace of God to cover our shortcomings. And let's be honest, there are many believers who say Jesus, but choose not to follow the commands of Christ. They don't want to love their neighbor as themselves. They don't want to turn the cheek and love their enemies. They don't want to take care of the least fortunate among them. They want to do what they want to do. Don't let this be you. Don't let it be you with a stubborn and hard heart. Don't be the one who is found to be saying Jesus, but not following Jesus. This is how we live in a state of readiness. This is how we avoid the statement, if I had more time. You do have time. The time is now. This is how you live life without regret and in fullness. Follow Jesus. Follow the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. A room full of Christian students were asked the question, how many of you believe in signs and wonders? Someone quickly said, it depends on who they're from, the devil or Jesus. The professor responded and said, regardless of who they're from, how many of you believe that signs and wonder can happen? All the hands went straight up. He then asked, so you believe that Jesus Christ can perform signs and wonders? The class was in agreement. Yes, he can. Then the professor asked, Do you believe that the devil can perform signs and wonders? Students hesitantly answered. With no real conviction about the answer to this question, most students put their hands up. Then the professor said boldly, Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. For false Christ and false prophets will arise 
and perform great signs and wonders so as to lead astray, if possible, even the elect. You see, many people believe that only Jesus can perform great signs and wonders. However, this is true of the devil as well. The Bible says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And if you don't have the knowledge that's in the Bible, the knowledge that reveals how the devil is capable of performing great signs and wonders, then how will you distinguish the work of God and the work of Satan? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 says, The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan, with all power and false signs and wonders, and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing, because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Now hear that carefully. With all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception. Saints of God, there is a great evil among us. And this evil is called deception. It's designed by the enemy in an attempt to trick us, to fool us into believing evil for good. So the task at hand for all believers is, how do we distinguish the divine from the diabolical? 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 to 3 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. So you see, if you are to ever see great signs and wonders, test the spirits. You may be wondering, well, how exactly do I test the spirits? What do I do? Well, the passage of Scripture we've just read said in verse 2 and 3, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. If that spirit acknowledges that Jesus Christ came in the flesh here on earth, died and rose again, and is now seated at the right hand of God, then that spirit is from God. However, if that spirit says anything else but Jesus, the Bible says this is the spirit of the Antichrist. So the next time you see a preacher, a prophet, or anyone performing anything in the supernatural, before you clap, before you accept it, before you say anything, pray for the Holy Ghost to give you discernment and then wait. Wait to see if that act was glorifying Jesus Christ as Lord. Before you clap, test the Spirit to see whether it confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord. Test whether or not that miracle, that healing, that act or wonder, is it really to the glory of God or is it to exalt that person? Is God being given the glory and honor or is the man or woman on stage saying, look at me, I can do this all day long. We need to test the spirits. And I believe that the majority of the devil's signs and wonders boil down to four major objectives. Money, fame, pleasure, and power. The devil will perform signs and wonders through people which are driven by one of these objectives. 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 to 6 says, Little children, you are from God and have overcome them, for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So understand, there are two spirits in operation. The spirit of truth and the spirit of error. 
The spirit of error is in the world. It's the spirit of the Antichrist. And the Bible clearly says that they speak from the world and the world listens to them. However, you and I are not of the world. As children of God, the Bible tells us that we have overcome them because greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. So test the spirits. Before you allow someone to stand before you as a man or woman of God, pray for sensitivity. Pray for the Holy Spirit to guide you in truth so that you may not be led astray. There are people of God out there, people who are being mightily used by the Lord in various ways. However, there's also those sent by the devil to create confusion to create an illusion of truth when it's really deception. So I encourage you, we must be a people who are joined with the spirit of truth. We must be a people who are filled with the Holy Spirit. We must be a people who test the spirits. We must be a people who are governed by the truth that is Jesus Christ. Although we live in this world, we do not, and we should not, fight our battles like the world. In fact, the weapons that we have available to us aren't physical weapons. But note how the Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God. The Word of God is one of the weapons that we have as children of God. It's a weapon that is powerful. The conflicts you face, the battles you face, the Lord has the final say over all of that. So I encourage you people of God to trust God, trust in the word of the Lord, trust in his promises, and you will have the victory.